All right, everyone, you should be able to see my screen. And Do you have people say yes? Yeah. yeah, hang on a sec. Um, so raise your hand if you can see my screen. There's a little hand icon in your control panel. Uh, yep, so everybody can see my screen. They can obviously hear me. And we're ready to rock. So good. welcome, yeah, everybody. Are we recording? Yep, are we, we recording? are recording. Well, Thanks for checking that, good. though, because we've done that before. <laughs> one time we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, everybody, to yeah, no. the five secrets to a five-figure team that duplicates wildly. I'm Sean Smith. Margie Alaprandi is my partner in the Elite Leaders Network here. And we're so thrilled and excited to bring this content to you. It's just a big, huge passion of ours to teach what works in this profession and really help people that are struggling, bumping up against walls, bumping up against their own internal conflicts and what have you, and help people move through that, help people stop their sabotaging behaviors and get to a place of leverage, a place of duplication, which is so critical in this business. We're going to talk a lot about that on this webinar and really just build a business that gives you the time freedom, the financial freedom, the emotional freedom, which is why you got into this business in the first place. And you'll hear more about us as we get into this webinar in a few minutes. But let me just tell you, working with Margie Alaprandi is amazing. And she has been on the top of the mountain that pretty much all of you are wanting to climb now. She's an industry icon. And I'll tell you a little bit more as we get in. But for whatever reason, you know, it was just on my heart, Margie. You're, you're amazing. And I just love working with you. So let's jump well, in. Sean. <laughs> I feel the same way. And <laughs> I want to say in all of my years of personal development, I'm talking back in the 80s, before some of the people on the line were born, I was attending personal development seminars. And in all of those years, with the profound impact those seminars have had on me, I have never, never met anyone who has a clear grasp on what it takes to break through to their greatness. Never. Like you really – you. Yours is fantastic, and you inspire me, and and um, and I love working with you as well. So thank you for that, and welcome uh, everyone awesome. to the webinar. We're so excited to be with you this evening, and congratulations for being here. We know there are other places that you could be, and other things that are calling on your time, but you are here. There were probably people that thought they would be here, or wanted to be here, or said they would be here, and they're not. But you are, and I. That means so much to me because. A great part of success in life is showing up and putting yourself um, in, 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 putting yourself, advocating for yourself by exposing yourself to information that can move you forward, that can inspire you. Maybe that one new idea that was just that tiny little tweak that you've been needing that can make all the difference. And so thank you so much for being here. With all our heart, we're grateful. To be able to serve you tonight. So let us tell you a little bit about what's going to come of this. What what will this webinar tonight do for you? So during the little bit of time that we're going to be together tonight, there are a few things that we're going to be discussing. And first of all, we're going to discuss the most common and costly uh, mistakes that are made in duplication. You know, between Sean and I, I think we have over 40 years of experience in this profession. And mm -hmm. so we've observed a lot of stuff. We've both helped people get to the top of the pay plan. We've helped people work through their barriers and, and break through and to, to fine-tune and to hone their strategies so that they're duplicating wildly. And so we, we know. We know where people get stuck. And tonight we're going to share with you the most common and costly duplication mistakes. We're also going to share with you the number one problem in the entire profession. Like master this and you master this game. We're also going to share the five secrets of duplication, and as we share all of this, you're going to get very clearly how you can implement all of this quickly so that you can begin right now to start getting the results that you desire, not several months from now, not a year from now, right now, implementable material that you're going to be able to act on and get results, wild results immediately. Love it. And you know that you're in the right place if you've got – this feeling that there's just so much more inside of you. I mean, I've had that feeling so many times. I know Margie has, and it's really a prerequisite for a breakthrough. If you've got something deep down inside that's just raging 
to get out and you feel like maybe, you know, a, a racehorse at the gate that, where the gate just hasn't opened up yet. That's how I felt so many times and still do sometimes. And every time I feel that way, I know I'm ready for something big. So if that's you, uh, rejoice in that. that. That means you're set up for something huge. You also have to be serious about really doing whatever it takes to create a duplicating business. We're going to talk about a lot about duplication tonight. And duplication is something that's critical. I think everybody knows how important it is, but people don't do it intentionally, meaning people are hoping that it just happens on its own. And sometimes it does if you're incredibly lucky, but most of the time it doesn't just happen on its own. So we're going to talk about the things that you have to do to stack the deck in your favor and make sure that duplication is happening on your team. And the big question really is, do you want a fantastic business? Do you want a duplicating business? Do you want what this profession has to offer? Or are you willing to do what it takes to have a fantastic business, a duplicating business, to get what this profession has to offer and share it with other people? That's really the question. Are you wanting or are you willing? Now, I'll tell you right now, this webinar will not be for you if you're just looking for the magic bullet, right? One of the things that I always say is, is that when you're looking to have a shortcut to success, you're really cutting your success short because that's not what truly significant people do. It's not about how can I get there faster. It's just how far can I go and how significant can I be and how much of a leader can I be? It's focused on the journey, not focused on the shortcut to the destination. I truly don't know anybody, I'm sure Margie would agree, who has shortcutted their way to foundational and long-lasting success. It just doesn't happen. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of people are wanting to do. And you've got to have that mindset. And you've also got to be willing to implement. You know, an idea not implemented is useless. So you've got to take everything that we're going to share with you, and you've got to put it in motion. So let us give you an idea about um, the, how the webinar is going to flow this evening. First of all, we're going to go somewhere between 60 and 75 minutes, and then at the conclusion, we're going to take some questions and answer specifically what's coming up for you. We really want to customize this to your needs right here, right now, where you sit in your business with your thoughts. Where do you feel inspired? Where, where could you use some support? Where do you feel a little stuck? What can we do to specifically help move you along? And while, so while the, the webinar is in process, you can type your questions in as you think about them in, in the bar there, or you can write them down and then type them in toward the conclusion of the webinar. And we invite you to not try to write down everything that is said, like really take it in so that you can get it at an experiential level and only write down notes that are for inspiration or if you get an idea that you want to take action on. So actionable things and inspirational ideas, just take notes on those. Otherwise, you're going to be writing and you're going to miss something and, you know, you're, you're and, and maybe that's the thing that you need the most. So take uh, notes on inspiration and then uh, toward the end of the call, we're going to let you know how you can play at a much higher level um, with something that we have never done before. And we want to encourage you to stick around till the end because at the end of the presentation, we're going to show you how you can get how you can get access to this recording. You know, if you listen to this again and maybe even again and again, I mean, I would I jump in and start implementing some of this stuff right away, the things that resonate with you, that you know you need to make actionable right away. But then I'd listen to it again in a couple of weeks or, or a month, and I think you'll be surprised at how far you have advanced. And so stick around till the end because we're going to let you know how you can get access to this, uh, to the recording of this webinar. Awesome. So just to set sort of a mindset foundation around this webinar, it's really critical that you do a few things. You've got to suspend your disbelief around three areas. And the reason is when people show up to a webinar like this and you're going to get a lot of really important information, your belief system, if your belief system is negative, if you have this cynical outlook of it never happens to me, people don't do what they say, or you know any of those negative beliefs, then it's you're really going to be rejecting the ideas that can change everything in your life. And one of the things that is a common trait 
for the truly successful and significant people and the people that change the world in their own way is that they're constantly thinking about possibility. And average people and the people that get stuck in mediocrity are constantly thinking about scarcity. They're constantly thinking that things won't work. That thought doesn't stop truly successful people. So if you notice that that's one of the patterns that you've had in the past, you've got to suspend that for now, at least for the going while for this webinar. Now. Oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> okay, you were gone for a minute, baby. I was. Oh, Thank shoot. You. Probably for about uh, probably for about sixty seconds, you okay. went away. One of the things that people do, and then you were gone. Got it. Okay. Sorry about so, that. One. So yeah. Reality. Back to current reality. Yeah. Are, and are you able to see my screen about um, the disbelief? Well, yeah, Sam. We were talking talking about um, you know if you if you don't show up with an open mind, open right. heart, with belief that this can happen for you, that you're shut off to yep. the possibility. Sorry, yeah, I was saying some pretty good stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> so basically, um, sorry about that technology glitch, but a lot of people have these limiting beliefs about what's possible. And one of the most common traits in significant people is that they're always talking about possibility and thinking of possibility. And average people are thinking in scarcity and thinking about what won't work. So we need you to suspend your disbelief about yourself, suspend your disbelief about your current reality, suspend your disbelief about your limitations, suspend your disbelief about what you've experienced in the past in your business. None of those things matter for the future. And the other thing I really want you to get for this webinar is that we might be teaching some things that you've already heard before, but it's not about whether you know this stuff. It's about whether you do this stuff. And that's a completely different question. And what I find is that th this is a fundamental problem in human nature, but definitely this profession, is that most people are looking for what's complicated instead of implementing what's simple. So these, th these might be some simple reminders for you, but you've got to take a look and say, how can I implement this stuff? How can I do this stuff? And if you're not doing it, don't let your ego get in the way and go, well, I already know this. This is what has built Margie's business. This stuff is what has built scores of businesses across the industry. And maybe that's what you're here to do is to get a simple reminder of what you need to go back to doing because you forgot or you haven't been implementing it in the past. And so I think what, Sean, what you're really asking everyone to do is sort of tap into your limitlessness and stay open to all of the possibilities. What I would like to invite you to do is – is to think back to that that initial why, like what what woke up in you when you first heard about this extraordinary concept of network marketing, direct sales, you know, that your company, its product or its service, you just came alive and something lit up, like you knew, you knew this was the right thing for you. What woke up in you? And the, you sensed at that moment, like I dare say your whole being was animated because you sensed possibility. I want you to go back to that place, reclaim those feelings because it absolutely is possible for you to create a kind, the kind of business with leverage and duplication that grows at some point with or without you. I promise you this is in your reach. And you already, ironically, you already have everything that you need inside of you. So many people are looking externally and thinking that they have to uh, make gigantic shifts. But right now, without learning one more magic script or one more, you know, secret, right now, You've got everything that you need within you. We're just going to point out and help you tweak some things. So um, you just have to follow the formula and, um, and, and to take a look at the people that have already done it and duplicate what they have done. That is what it's all about. And so we want to just share a few stories of people that have done this work um, one of the people I know, one of the past clients, her name is Koti from Texas, and she made a real significant shift in her business, especially when she started focusing on the simple, duplicatable, controllable things in her business. She went from a, a production of about $2,000 a month, and two months later, or three months later, she brought in over $28,000 and brought in over 80 new team members. And it wasn't because she started to do this 
you know, complicated leadership stuff. It was because she actually got back to basics and she didn't bring all those people in on her own. She can't, but basics are what duplicates. And when she got back to basics, she actually found a lot of balance in her life. And that's one of the things that I'm really happy about when people find balance, not just success. Um, I, one of my other clients and great friends is Jim Cundiff. Many of you know Jim. And he says that when he switched the, or, or fixed rather, the seven inches between his ears, he came home very similarly, went back to basics, doing the things that work. His business exploded. He went from 39 people on his team to 200 people on his team quickly. He hit a, a top position in the company, was the king of sales in the seminar in his company, he got back into his Cadillac and I mean, just phenomenal success. But what I want you to understand is it's because they went back to the basics, right? That's the big deal here. So don't mistake the basics as being elementary and the people that are going crazy in this industry are doing something that you don't know how to do. Just implementing the things that work. And you know, one of the most gratifying things in building a team and one of the most gratifying things in mentoring and coaching people in, in all, in, you know, in any network marketing or direct sales company, I know you've experienced this, Sean. It's just when, when the light bulb finally goes on and, and I just know for sure that there are some people listening into the call tonight who are saying, this is my time. Like, this is my time. And when that happens, and it coincides with the right information and the right intention and the right belief system and, and the right strategies, then magic happens. And mm. you know, this testimonial here by David, I can't tell you how many times when those things come together and, and, and we fully believe it'll come together for many of you tonight on the line. And that is our greatest joy to see the results. Like something really changes, something shifts. And um, and people double their income in a short amount of time, 90 days, 60 days, a couple of weeks. I mean, it can happen. It really, really can happen for you. So um, mm -hmm. stay open to the possibilities. And I'll tell you that the challenge is that we've got this profession that is full of promise. And we've got um, just outrageous opportunity, truly, in so many fantastic companies in our profession that have it all dialed in just right and get the vast majority of people in direct sales and network marketing, they don't have that freedom and the income that they hope to have. But it truly is available. And a lot of people are spinning their wheels and they're constantly chasing the wrong problems. They get off on a tangent going this direction and that, kind of missing the mark and, you know, not, not having um, – not having their eye on the target. And so we hope to help clarify some of those things tonight. And most mm -hmm. people don't understand how to intentionally duplicate. And I'll tell you what, there is a science to it, and that is exactly what this business is all about. It's a different kind of business. This is not an employer-employee situation that does not work an hour, get paid for an hour. This is all about creating leverage, exponential growth of a business and duplication. And if you miss that piece, like you could have so many other things dialed in, but you miss that piece and you're missing the boat. Mm. So true. So true. And like Margie said, we've been, you know, almost 40 years in the industry. Um, Margie's been building a gigantic business. You'll hear more about that in a moment. And I've been on the coaching side, really helping people get through stuff. And what we found is that Let's just keep it simple here. You know, most people just want a, a solid business. They want to make good money. They want financial freedom. They want time freedom. They want some kind of peace of mind. I think that's why everybody gets into this business. But because of the things that Margie was talking about and other belief issues and stuff like that, you know, people rarely achieve that. But it's not for the lack of talent or the lack of understanding. It's really just the lack of implementing what truly works. So we're going to jump into all of this content here. and But before we do, let me tell you just a little bit more about us. Uh, my name is Sean Smith. And you know what? It, I think, Margie, our slides are not, for whatever reason, I see the slides going on on my end, but I don't think the slides are following us. So I'm going to do a little bit of technical stuff. We're going to keep going, but just bear with us on the slides. Um, we'll see if we can catch up the slides here in a moment. But just tell you a little bit about me. You know, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I've got two amazing kids and a fantastic wife, Sybil. I am a coach. I've been in this direct sales 
um, and network marketing profession for many, many years. And my journey really started, just to give you a 60 second background on me, my journey started in personal development back when I was 13 years old and I was almost killed by my next door neighbor when I got uh, hit, run over by him. Basically, he was doing 50 miles an hour. I got run over by him when I was, as I was riding my bike to school. And that taught me that no matter where we are in life, we're never promised our next breath. And so since that moment, I've been really focused on creating a life of excellence and doing whatever it takes for as long as it takes, because we don't know when this gift called life is going to be taken away. And about 20 years after that, I really got into personal development, started attending all kinds of seminars, had some huge breakthroughs around my, my beliefs and what I didn't think was possible before, my self-esteem and so forth. And ever since that time, I've been really studying human behavior, been studying why we sabotage ourselves. I've been focused on limiting beliefs and our fears and our internal conflicts because that is the thing that stops everybody in all walks of life, no matter what it is we're talking about. It's that internal core stuff that really gets in our way. And so that's been my main focus, my area of expertise, if you will. And recently, Margie and I have connected with, with her extensive background. And you know, we're just really passionate about helping people get into advanced leadership position and teaching some of these things that really, truly work. So Margie, do you want to, I'll pass it on to you and you can share a little bit about yourself. Okay. Yeah. Are you fiddling, fiddling with the slides and fixing yeah, I'm going to, I'll um, see if I can do something here. So um, my name is Margie Alprandi and um, my network marketing journey began, I don't know, almost 26 years ago now. And I was at a real crossroads in my life at that time. I had three little kids. They were five, four, and two years of age. And I was torn because I was single and I knew I needed to provide a living for the kids. And I had been staying home with them, but my background was a junior high school music teacher, did not want to go back to teaching school, didn't want to leave my kids at home, didn't want to miss their growing up years, but felt compelled to have a consistent income. So I signed on, and I was getting ready to go back to teaching school in the fall, junior high school music, very begrudgingly. I didn't want to do it. Um, but as destiny would have it, a few weeks before school started, I happened upon my opportunity. And while I had been familiar with the model of network marketing for years, something just, I mean, right product, right time. And, man, I caught the vision. I, I saw the possibilities, and I canceled that teaching contract on a wing and a prayer. I started doing this business full-time, no previous experience, no money to build a business with, and three little kids. Now, you know as well as I do that, that people could use any one of those as an excuse to not build a business, but my desire to give my kids an extraordinary life um, was such a strong and compelling why that, uh, that, that I never looked back. And certainly there were many challenges. Not having money was one of them because if, if someone would invite me to do a meeting, for example, in California, I would jump in my car and I would drive 9, 10, 11 hours from College City to California to do a meeting, and I couldn't afford to stay in hotels, so I would sleep in the parking lot of hotels, and in the morning I would find a local gas station and, you know, go in and get ready and put my electric curlers in and my my uh, makeup on and get dressed or want to dress and go off to these meetings and just, you know, like, hey, we're going to be rich. Come join me. We're going to be millionaires. And, you know, just I, I look back on those times and, and certainly that, you know, I, I was doing whatever it took. And um, no, no victim, no poor me story, just uh, that's what I had to do to make it happen. And um, within a short time, well, within a year, I was making – more money in a month than I could have made in an entire year teaching school. By the time I was 35, I started at age 32. By the time I was 35, I'd made my first million dollars in this profession. And, um, and uh, now I, I look back on all of this, and I think what, what made the difference, and I think part of it was that I really made a whatever-it-takes decision. And that makes it all so much easier because when you're a motto mano, half in, half out, and the challenges come along, you have to constantly weigh. Somebody says no, and you're kind of like, oh, maybe I should quit. Maybe I should quit. Somebody says yes. You're like, I'm in forever. 
somebody says no, you're like, oh, this is so tough. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. I should quit. I should quit. But when you've made a whatever it takes decision, it saves a lot of energy because you don't have to rethink it. And while I had plenty of challenges and plenty of rejection and all of the things that make this business challenging, particularly in the beginning, I had made that whatever it takes decision. And it really helped me to, to weather the challenges. And so, Currently, I have a team that's over 250,000 people in 29 countries, and I think, <laughs> sorry, um, I think back to those times that were so challenging, um, and, uh, and and the fact that, that I hung in there, and uh, gosh, I'm so sorry, I don't know why I'm so emotional. Anyway, I have been able to uh, create a life for my kids that is beyond my wildest dreams and um and they're grown now so mm. <laughs> five <laughs> excuse me five four and two years of age when i started they're now 31 30 28 and uh, 21 years of age four kids and so i can now <clears throat> check that one off my list give my kids an extraordinary life mission accomplished and so you know i just believe in this profession, I believe what it can do for people and and for the challenges that we had in those early days, me being gone a lot and the kids learning independence and, you know, I look who they've become today and I want to say that it's um, in addition to the things they've been able to enjoy, enjoy and the life I've been able to provide them, traveling all over the world and, and um, you know, giving them access to private school and those kinds of things, I never would have been able to do on a school teacher's salary. But I look at them today, and I think that largely who they've become is not in spite of the fact that I go to home-based business, but largely because of the fact that they saw an entrepreneurial mom who did not sell out on her dreams. And so they know that their dreams matter too. Mm. That was beautiful. Thanks for being authentic yeah. and open and, and letting that emotion show because – that's what a lot of people don't tap into. You know, they, they tap into all the other stuff. We're going to get into that here in a little bit. But I just really appreciate you for being that transparent. That was Well, every now beautiful. and then the emotions kind of get me all over again. And so why Sean and I are here for uh, you tonight is because it absolutely jazzes it. It just freaking lights us up to be able to support you in your dreams so that you can, whatever your goals are, you know, maybe it's not complete financial freedom and, and all this passive income. Maybe it's just, it, it, maybe it's extra money to make it through the month. Maybe it's, you know, to provide some support. Maybe it's to make a difference. Maybe who knows what your goals and dreams are, but that is why we are here to support you in whatever those are for you. And so now we're going to jump on into the three most costly duplication mistakes that people make. So let's look at this. Number one, you know, number one most costly duplication mistake is working with the wrong people. Now, when I say wrong people, I don't mean like anybody. I don't mean that from a judgment standpoint. Like no one's the wrong person. But there are, there are definitely people that are clear about building a business and their actions and their words align. And in the beginning sometimes, like we're just like feeling for the pulse. If somebody can fog a mirror, if anybody is just like willing to listen to us, we have this sort of feeling <laughs> desperation. Like, please just join my team, join my team. And I'll tell you, when people feel that desperation, it actually scares them. Like, really? Could I possibly be that bored to that person? They see the dollar signs in your eyes. They see the, the desperation. And so, you know, it's just so important that you hold the space um, of, of the kind of people that you really want to attract. In fact, even at the beginning of this year, I wrote myself a really specific affirmation about the kind of people that I want to attract to my team. And it's very, very specific. It's specific. It is as specific as an affirmation that I wrote six and a half years ago that absolutely called in my soulmate. Oh, my gosh. It was to the detail of the qualities and the attributes that I wanted this person to possess. And I created that exact same thing for my team. And if you'll do that, like you, then you, you won't spin your wheels chasing after people who it's just simply not right for. 
Like, love them. Let them be. And then once you join your team and they get all excited but then they don't do anything, support them in every way they can. you can. But don't go on pause with your own business growth waiting for them to kick it into gear. Like, just be very, very choosy about the people that you give your time to because as you do – you send a very clear message, and it's it's very defining. If you work just like indiscriminately, and you beg, and you you cajole, and you keep trying and trying and trying with people who aren't kicking it into gear, you send a message that that's okay for you. You send a message that that's that, that's good enough, and you want to send a clear message that your time is valuable. You're about big things. You have a big call. And you're looking for the right people who are going to link arms with you and move at the pace that you need to make. And that's what you're looking for. And you're going to love all the rest. There's a place for everybody. There's absolutely a place for everyone. But you're looking for the people who deserve who deserve your time. So be discriminating. What do you want to add on that one, Sean? First of all, I was laughing for probably two solid, probably two solid minutes <laughs> quietly over here. People that can fog a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the reasons it makes it so funny is it's so true, true. That that's how a lot of people operate you know if you've got a pulse if if you're still warm if rigor mortis hasn't set in yet then you're perfect and you're my next leader and margie mentioned you know this is not about a, a personal judgment right versus wrong and this is where a lot of people do get stuck on this mistake that you're judging people as being the wrong people and when you get into that judgment mode and there's some emotion behind it and there's some irritation, then it's not serving you. Like if you get irritated that your best friend is not the right person, that's your fault, right? Because them not being the quote unquote right person or wrong person, it's just got to be an assessment. It's not a judgment. And so you've got to take a look at who is working, right? Not who has the ability, who has the talent who is talking, who should be good, who could be good, who is working, who is doing the things. And that right there will change everything in your business because when you're focused on the people who say they're going to do stuff, but they aren't actually doing things, then you're, you're, you're stalling them as well. Not only is it harder for you to keep going, but you're creating this this like drudgery energy in your business and you're holding them back and you're handicapping them as well. So it's just really about what are people doing? But the key is, can you assess people neutrally? You know, I want you to think of this as an investment decision. That's all it is. If you invest your time, are you going to get a return? And as soon as you invest your time and you're not getting a return, stop investing your time. And it can just be a simple, neutral decision. You can still love somebody and appreciate them and root for them and believe in them, but not work with them. Those two things don't have to be connected. And that's one of the things that Margie is fantastic at is maintaining love for everybody, but protecting her time with who she works you know, with. And, and that's the, the big key distinction here. The so, second, you know, one thing, you, mm -hmm. you, one thing you always say, Sean, that I really like is like, what do you want anyway, right? As you visualize your business, don't you want proactive people that are moving ahead? Maybe they even dash ahead of you. Like, I mean, that's fantastic. You don't want, these are your words, Sean, an adult daycare. <laughs> an adult daycare. So don't create cripples. All right. Carry right. On, and one of the ways you don't create adult daycare centers, stop changing people's diapers. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> if you change their diapers, then they will continue to expect you to change their diapers. Obviously, we're having a little bit of fun with this, but this is so true for so many people. When you know what you want down the road, act like it now because that's the only way you're going to create something in the future is by building it intentionally now thanks for jumping in on that margie that that is uh yeah, 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 yeah. a great analogy all right number two another huge duplication mistake is becoming a manager or becoming a director or just stopping your recruitment your building your selling so that you can manage other people 
when you do that, you do several things. Number one, it's it, it, it's kind of like the analogy I always get is you're leading, you know, you're walking ahead of people. And then as soon as you cross a certain line, you turn around. And as soon as you turn around, you know, everybody starts bumping into each other because you're no longer moving forward. And what, what a lot of people do is they hit this position and then they think, oh, well, now I've got to step into quote unquote leadership. And that's all about helping other people do what they're going to do. But if you trade in your building in the process of helping other people, you're going to cause everything to crash and you're going to be building your business on the belief and the assumption that this business is about crossing a certain line so you can stop working. And what that means is your business is going to be created on the energy of people wanting to stop working. And that is going to uh, like tell everybody that the business building activities must not be fun because my leader just stopped doing them. And you can't create any level of duplication, any level of success in this profession if you build a business on the, on the presumption of you got to move through these painful, difficult, not fun tasks so that you can stop and then tell other people to do all that drudgery. So from a mindset <laughs> perspective, it, it's tragic what, you know, what will happen to your business when you become a manager. You should never, ever stop building, ever. There will probably be a time when if you want, you can, but by then it will probably be such a joyful thing for you that it will be such a natural part of who you are that likely you will keep going because there is a time when that, that snowball that you've got rolling down the hill gathers velocity and it does, it does <laughs> there are there is a time when it does happen without you, when you've established you know leaders all over the place that are just so profoundly capable and, and in motion and they have layers and layers of leaders in their team but most people stop way way too soon and then the psychological message that Sean was talking about the psychological message that it sends is, is uh, very damaging it's interesting that people um, they have a couple of people sign up and they think oh all I need to do is work with these you know, that, because they have visions that just these couple of people oh I am rich with just these couple of people well I want to tell you this business if you haven't learned yet has is definitely has attrition and you know quite often we see things bigger for people than they actually see them for themselves and the best way to lead like Sean was saying the best way to lead is by example because when you are experiencing something today and teaching it tonight and tomorrow to your team it's like it rings authentic and it's real and it's valuable and it's relevant and it just you know it's just so important that you don't move into management mode where you're supervising everybody, telling them what to do while you're not doing it. Like there will be a time, but it it is trust me, it's not yet. So um, <laughs> I'm glad you said you know, that because I did get kind of universal there, and you know, like never, so, never, never. Yeah, and and I do want to say. I but, could absolutely quit, quit right now. I mean, there's no – Yeah. I could quit. No, well, but your business is still building. So I think that's the key distinction. So I'm, yeah. I'm really glad you said that. Okay. Most people are stopping too early, and their business hasn't built them out of the business. That's I mean, once cool. you get to a point where it's all working on its own, then the building is still happening. But, yeah, you, you hit it home. So I'm glad you you, uh, you mentioned that for sure. Yeah, but chances are for, for most everyone, it's not yet. Exactly. So it's number three here. <laughs> not yet. This is – such an important one, this number three, is trying to be somebody you're not. You know, I think it's so common for us to look at the leaders in the profession and try to imitate them, maybe their mannerisms, and um, adopt certain, you know, rather than just being inspired by them and, and learning from watching them, we try to actually be them. And it, and it comes it comes off very inauthentic. I think the most freeing thing that I've learned in building my business is that authenticity is what people crave. Mm. And there's not a certain personality. It's not, like this, it's not like this gregarious personality that can, you know, be dominant and win people over. Like that only works if that person is naturally gregarious. What mm. also works is someone who quietly and honestly shares their story with power and authentic voice. Like that lands 
when you are authentic, it lands with people. And I promise you, people crave authenticity. I think more than any other time, I've been doing this for 26 years now, and I watch what people respond to. And it isn't the loud, overbearing. It is the genuine, the heart. It is a um, an honest, personal sharing. And not a slick presentation necessarily. Actually, your story, however meager you may think it is. And, and I had somebody say to me the other day, I don't have a story. I don't have a story. I said, well, you certainly do have a story. You're currently a massage therapist. You love massage therapy. And you have great joy in helping people be free of pain. And in the meantime, you are falling in love with a business that you know you've got some big dreams now for you and your husband as an empty nester. And, and you, you have big dreams about what you want to do. And you've found a vehicle to help provide that. And you're already seeing results. I mean, there's a story. So whatever your life situation is right now, you have a story mm -hmm. and you have dreams and hopes. You have possibilities that you see. And when you share that, oh my gosh, it just rings true and it lands. It doesn't have to be some big rags to riches thing. It's like you have a story and that's what people care about. So right now, without knowing anything else, without one more great script, you can share your story. You can relate authentically with people and it will land. So just please know that authenticity. You are enough. Your story is enough. Your perspective, how you are, the way you are, the way you talk, not only is it enough, it's perfect. Just mm. you as you are right now. Love that. People are craving authenticity. We live in a world now where a lot of people are sort of inherently not trusting others. And there are some negative connotations in this profession for sure. But authenticity trumps all of that stuff. And authenticity is duplicatable. So when you try to be like somebody else and then everybody else that you bring into your business needs to be like that other person that you're trying to be like, none of that's going to be duplicatable. But if the message is I'm going to be me, you're going to be you, we can still do these simple tools, then that's what really truly duplicates for people. And when you try to be somebody else, you're going to kick up all of your fears and limiting beliefs. You're actually going to be strengthening them because the message you're sending yourself is that you're not enough. Therefore, you have to be like somebody else. So we, I mean, we, we can't understate this one big enough. And it is one of the most common things that people really struggle with is I have to be a recruiter like this person, or I have to sell like that person, or I have to look like this person or whatever. And that'll just, it'll just derail everything for you. All right, let's jump into the number one problem in this entire profession. And this is something that we talked a little bit about, and Margie and I, and we discussed, you know, if we could boil it down to one thing, what would this one thing be? And for me, it's, well, for both of us, it's, it's this, it's emotional attachment. Because when people are emotionally attached, then the normal, everyday, you know, people stuff frustrates you, right? You might look like this lady that just popped up on the screen. The frustration that most people go through in this business is because of their emotional attachment. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier. If you have a friend of yours who gets in the business but doesn't work and you get irritated by that, then you're emotionally attached. If you have somebody who gives you their name and number and it ends up being a wrong name and number and that irritates you, you're emotionally attached. If you have people that don't show up at your business meeting or don't show up on a one-on-one -on -one and it crushes you, you're emotionally attached. Now, I'm not saying that you have the ability to just turn your emotions off as a human. There might be a little bit of a hiccup. There might be a little bit of sadness. I mean, Margie has shared with me, there's still some sadness every once in a while when people you know, don't do what they say they're going to do, but it's really coming from a place of what I hear in Margie is that she's just genuinely sad for them because they're taking themselves out of the game, but it doesn't make her Margie. It doesn't make her stop and it's not going to affect 
how she shows up for the very next person. That's the key distinction. And that's what most people have not gotten in this business. They are still emotionally stuck in other people's decisions. And if you're um, not just success, but if your mindset, if your state is determined by other people's situation, by their decisions, by what's going on in their life, if you're allowing your self-esteem, your confidence, your actions, whether or not you go for your biggest dreams, if you're allowing those things to be determined by what other people are doing or saying or not doing or not saying, then you're basically like you're not fighting for your dreams. You're fighting for other people's limitations. You're more committed to other people's choices than controlling your own destiny and controlling your own dreams. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is to st is, is to keep staying in the game and to stand up when you get knocked down is to detach yourself emotionally from other people's decisions. Now, we're not saying detach yourself emotionally from your business. You heard the emotion come out of Margie 15 minutes ago. This is a lady after 26 years, she is emotionally attached to this business, but in the right areas. You would not hear Margie cry like that, telling you about the thousands and thousands and thousands of people who've come in the doors and then exited on their own. She wouldn't get that emotion coming up because that's not where she's emotionally attached to the business. Was that right, Margie? I've never even asked you that. I'm assuming that, but I've never heard you with any kind of that's like right. emotional that's right. right. So yeah, you've got I you've mean, got to be emotionally attached to the right areas. Attached. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll so come in a second. okay, so you've got to be emotionally attached to the right areas, and the right areas are everything that's positive. It's your vision. It's your dreams. It's your goals. It's your why. It's your purpose. It's your values. That's where your positive emotional attachment is important. But when you're emotionally attached to your fears, to your limiting beliefs, to people, quote unquote, disappointing you, I put it in quotes because nobody can disappoint me, d disappoint you. You disappoint yourself based on what other people do. That's different. When you're emotionally attached to all the negative things that are attributed to other people's decisions and other people's actions, you can't win in this business. You just can't win. You will constantly feel like you're, you're being you know, held back by these restrictions like you're in chains because you're emotionally unstable if other people have access to your mindset. So, you know, good luck on this one. This is a tough one. And the reason we chose it as the number one challenge of the profession is because we do care. We've got, we, we care deeply. A lot of people are are, are as motivated by making a difference in the world as they are by making money. I, I've learned this in my sojourn crossing paths with hundreds of thousands of network workers within my company and all companies. Like a lot of people are motivated by purpose. They want to make a difference. And so it's a challenge to say, okay, care, but don't care. And so I, I want to share with you some of the distinctions that I've been able to make. And I do want to also share that recently I um, I was kind of feeling like sadness. Like I, I had to think back, like, what happened today? That, like, there's just a little bit of heaviness in my space. Like, what's going on here? And I remembered it was just someone had said no to me. And I had seen such possibilities for them, right? And it's just like, oh, okay, I'm shaking this loose, right? Some of the things I tell myself um, in those situations are, number one, nobody owes you anything. And you're only, I say Margie, Margie, you're only looking for those who are looking for you, and there are plenty of them. Keep on looking, and you're going to find them. I remind myself, and I would remind you, that you're the one with the gift. You're the one with the gift. How many people are searching for the very product or service you offer? How many people are searching for a way to claim their life back? You're the one with the gift. How many people are searching for a way to have security in retirement, send their kids to college, uh, have a little passage? How many people are searching for those things? You're the one with the gift, right? So remember, you're Santa Claus. You're the one with the gift. And so you don't get bogged down because nobody owes you anything. And they, they get to decide for themselves. They're on their own timetable. They get to choose. And so what I've learned is that all disappointment comes from getting attached to wanting it your way and wanting it your way now, right? That's, Ooh, like that's good. I want it my way. I want it my way. I want it my way now. Because a lot of people that will say no to you right now, 
hold on to this. They may come back another time if you just let it be, just let it be. So you want it your way and you want it your way now. And so what happens is you get this attachment going, and it's this roller coaster that I talked about a minute ago. You're so high when things go right, and then you plummet so low when things go wrong. But what you want to do, I'm not, I'm not saying you won't care because you're always going to care because you, you, that's why you're in the business because you care. But here are the words that work so well for me. High intention and low attachment mm-hmm. because – High intention. You've got goals, right? Like you want to be a certain rank by a certain time, and you set that goal. You have an idea of who might be the people who are going to link arms with you. You've got that goal. You have a mind of the people. You have an idea of the people. you got to have high intention. That goal stays in place. You have to have low attachment to which ones say yes. And you have some in mind. So just keep that high intention. That doesn't, so it means you can have goals. You can have objectives. You can have a number in mind. And you keep that in place. Don't get attached about who it's going to be. Because I promise you, if you'll keep the space open, the right people will fill the space. You get attached to a person, you hang on to them too long, you're, you're missing out on the person that sits around the corner who is exactly right. He's putting their hand up waiting for you to find them. And if you let yourself take yourself out of the game because your attachment is so high, you miss the ones that are waiting, and they are. They're waiting for you, and they're going to hear it through your voice. They're going to hear your call. They're waiting to be on your team. So keep the high intention. I can't tell you how many times I've seen miracles in the 11th hour when the intention stays high but the attachment stays low, and all of a sudden that last big order comes in like out of the blue. Somebody from a trade show that they met three years ago calls them and places a $1,000 order. I mean, this mm. happens, but it's only when the attachment is low yeah. and the intention stays high. It's a freaking challenge to do it, but you can, and it really is the number one thing that will keep you clean and clear and open and will attract the right members to your team. I love the way you explain that. That is so good. And there's a distinction between caring and being emotionally attached. And one of the challenging things for me in my business as well, it, just as a coach, is getting close to people who have what it takes and they're so close to a breakthrough and they decide to not go further. It, I don't think that we're ever going to get over some kind of human emotion there, but there's a distinction where that stops you or it doesn't stop you. And if you play with that emotion, like Margie did earlier, like she, what she alluded to is you just kind of sit with that emotion and go, huh, what is this? And where's it coming from? Most people get emotionally attached because of, and I love the way you put it. I never heard you say, you know, I want it my way and I want it now. That's where the emotional attachment is negative. And if it's all about what you have lost, if, it, if you're feeling like, I mean, that's a huge word. Nobody likes loss. If you're feeling like you're losing something, if you're feeling like you're not going to get something like a goal or you're not going to, you know, get to your convention or seminar in, in the right, um, you know, suit or the right, in the right car or whatever your rank is, then that's where you're emotionally attached in a negative state. If you're just sad because... The, the you know people are deciding to not play along with you or you're just kind of tapped into just that human experience then that's fine and i don't ever want you to get away from that i don't want you to become you know robotic or to or to become uh in any way insensitive and but that's what most people think we're saying when we say don't be emotionally attached most people think we're saying don't care And that's not true. You can still care. Actually, somebody sent in a question and she says, it's hard to be not emotionally attached when you've been pouring belief into people. See, you can, you can believe people, you can believe in people, but still, if they decide to not keep going because of things happening in their life, you can still not choose to have that derail you and wishing they were different. You know, it, it's it's just about accepting what is and holding the possibility that they may come back later, like Margie said, that you don't always know whose plan people are operating according to. What we do know is it is not your plan, right? But attachment to your plan and your timeline is when these things get 
really, really difficult. So that's what I want you to do. Just kind of scan your own emotions and see what is this coming from? And am I wishing people were different? You know, one of the things that Margie and I will get into a little bit later is we've got a live event coming up. And I would say, Margie, that this is probably the number one benefit that people will get out of the live event. And it's probably the biggest benefit that a lot of people have gotten out of previous live events that we've done uh, yeah. you know, in similar capacity is this issue. And since it's the number one problem in the entire profession, then it's a pretty good thing to get rid of, right? But you've got to really go That's after exactly it right. from different angles. I mean, we could literally spend 90 minutes talking about this from all kinds of different That's angles, it. from a sales, from recruiting, from everything. And, you know, it's not the intention of this webinar, so we're going to move on here. But just understand that this is a winnable game and it's a journey that's going to take time. And it's the only way you're really going to ever reach your potential in what you can do in this business is to sign up for this game, continue to get better and better and better, and know that there's never going to be a switch that you just turn off and never care about when anybody says no ever again. But can you get to the point where you can master that emotion and master that journey instead of letting it derail you? And part of it is, I, I, we keep adding in on this one, but that sweet question or comment that came in is so right on. When you poured belief into someone, you've invested so much of who you are and you see the possibilities. Like sometimes we just see the possibilities for others bigger than they see it for themselves and we stake things on that. Yeah, we, we, we see it because we want to be with them and we want them, you know, running alongside of us. So we, we feel it in ourselves and for ourselves too. But we want it for them, and it's so hard when they make a decision. I, I think you said the perfect thing, and that is nothing's really on our timetable. You know, we just have to trust this process and to know that if we plant enough seeds and we, we keep pouring that belief into people that, that, um, that, that will, will create a giant business. So, mm -hmm. yeah, keep the emotions strong. You want that there. So now we're going to move on. Um, this, like Sean said, this is one we could talk on and on and on about. But let's start talking about the five, six, the five secrets to five-figure duplication. Number one is action. Like I am, after 26 years, there are some things I just know in every cell of my body. And I'm a believer in massive action equals massive results. Now, I know that massive action is not something that somebody can sustain indefinitely in their business for years and years, but a short spurt of giving it everything you've got, of talking to people everywhere you go or however you introduce the business to people or the products to people, just really, really being engaged such an important piece. And, you know, if you're listening and you think, oh, my gosh, I'm nine years in, and I've never done massive action. I want to tell you, you can. You can start today, and you can you can create a story today. The reason I'm such a believer in action is I truly believe that it solves all problems. Action solves virtually every single problem because minimally you're going to learn. Even if you have incorrect action and it doesn't result in the things that you want it to result in, you're going to get feedback. Feedback is good. You can modify course. You can course correct if you're getting feedback. So if you want more money, move into action. If, you, if you're feeling like a little shaky in your belief, like can you do it, move into action and prove that you can. Don't learn one more thing. Don't get ready to get ready to get ready to get ready. Like just start acting right now. Begin, be willing to begin imperfectly so that you can take that learning curve and actually get really, really good sometimes. So you want to believe, believe, build belief that you can do this start, move into action. If you want to build confidence that you're really good at this and increase your proficiency, start. Do it. Do it more often because there'll come a time when you'll create some momentum, when you'll gain some proficiency. And you'll also get a, a, a better story by moving into action. And so it's just so important that, that you're out there walking the path that, um, that you're asking others to, to imitate and be in action. The other thing is you'll create urgency. When you're in action, like people around you get it. They're like, whoa, something very exciting is happening here. Happening here. I want to be a part of this. And when you move into action and you've got that, that feeling about you, wow, things are happening, um, people around you duplicate. So really action is the only thing that will truly duplicate. And it's the thing that you do want to duplicate. And so... Move into action and be willing to begin imperfectly. It's better to hesitate with fault than to. Than, it's better to hesitate with fault 
than to begin. It, what, how does that go? It's better to get to begin. <laughs> better, be, better, better to begin with fault go. than to hesitate perfectly. Right. It's better to begin with fault than to hesitate perfectly. And anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly until you learn how to do it well. <laughs> I just love <laughs> that that teaching by you. It's better to begin imperfectly than hesitate perfectly or with fault. Um, and that is so critical. And at the end of the day, you've got to take action. Now, I know this is not some new concept to any of you. We all know that you've got to take action to get results. But most people don't focus on this as an assessment tool. And here's where I'm going with this. Most people get stuck. And when they get stuck, they focus on everything or many things other than what they're actually doing. They're focused on the people that are not coming with them. They're focused on people not showing up, not returning phone calls, what their team members are not doing. And they forget to really take a look in the mirror and say, what am I doing? And so whenever you are not happy with what's going on, I want you to look at your habits. Your habits cannot be denied. Habits will never be denied. I don't care if you have the, the most positive mindset in the world and you're not in action, your positive mindset will not manifest into results and vice versa. If you are taking action and you don't know a whole lot, you'll get more results than that person who's trying to mindset their way into success. So since your habits cannot be denied, I always want you to take a look at what am I doing? What are my habits? You know, one of the most powerful questions I ever asked myself is whenever I have a goal in my business, you know, I'll give you an example. In my coaching business, I want to cross the seven-figure mark, and that'd be great. And I've had that goal for a long time. And about two years ago, I asked myself, well, do I have seven-figure habits? And it was a very simple, very short response, and I didn't like the answer to that. But what it did is it immediately took a lot of the emotion away from me. And it's not how bad do I want my goal. It's am I following the right recipe that's going to get that goal. And what I can tell you is I have never, ever in my 10 years – in doing this, and in all of Margie's time, I'm sure she hasn't seen this either, I have never ever seen anybody who is following the required recipe and not getting the results they should be getting. I have always seen people who want something more than what their actions are showing. So if you're following the right recipe, you'll get the results. Now, that, that might not mean you know, you, you can create a recipe, follow that exact recipe and not get what you want. Well, that means that the recipe wasn't designed to get that, right? So if you're not getting what you want in your business, I can guarantee you, you're simply not doing the necessary actions. You need to do more. You need to do it better. You need to get rid of the emotional attachment or something. But I want that to be the main assessment tool that you start with. What are my activities? And usually it's going to be a very sobering answer, but it's the only one that you can immediately change and get yourself some some different outcomes instead of just getting all emotionally stuck in you know in in, in just the the yuck right in in the just the stickiness of who's doing what and who should be doing what and so forth so it's all about action the second thing is personal development and the reason we have this in the top 5 is because most people don't make this important enough. Most people are so focused on their business that they forget to build themselves along the way. And if you create success in your business, but you don't build yourself along the way, that's a lose-lose situation. Either your success will be capped because your personal growth can't scale up with your business success, or which usually happens, or you'll hit a level of success that doesn't fulfill you. And it doesn't make you happy anyway. So it's a lose-lose proposition when you're not making sure that you are personally growing as well. So we want you to implement these things intentionally in your schedule. A daily personal development plan is critical. So every single day, we want this to be non-negotiable. It's not that you're going to journal right or you're going to go for a rock, walk or you're going to exercise when you feel like it. Those should be staples in your calendar. Those should be staples in your habits. You should always do those things. I can tell you that when I look into the recipes that my clients are following, 
when their business starts to drop, I can tell you probably at least 90% of the time, if not more, they have stopped doing their daily personal development practices and their business is following that. And then when they get back into the daily personal development, their energy is better, they're emotionally detached, and their business follows it. So too many people are just focusing on the business and you're really looking at the wrong target. The other thing is fulfillment, right? You've really got to make sure that along the way you are fulfilling your values and your values are unique to you. It's not about doing the things that most people want to you know, achieve in life. It's about doing the things that are most important to you. Be yourself, not like somebody else. We already talked about that. And finally here, uh, well, I guess I got ahead of myself and started talking about this. You must grow with your business. If you are not growing with your business, then one of those two things are going to come crashing down. It's not going to be a good solid fit. And as I said earlier, it's a lose-lose situation. So is there anything you want to add to that, Margie? Yeah, just a, just a couple of things. And that is because this business really does demand of us to constantly pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and to um, really grow ourselves at a deeper level than maybe other types of businesses where you could skate along as an employee. Like this really, it really calls on the very best that we've got. So you need to constantly reinforce your 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 strength and your clarity and, and so forth with your own personal development because you simply can't outperform your self-esteem and your clarity about who you are and what you want and how and, and how you have what you need within you, the capabilities, like just expose yourself to personal development material, to industry, pers or pro to profession material, to things that will inspire you, other people's stories. Like really avail yourself of that and just fill that wellspring because that's what you're drawing on to, you know, feed and, and, and give water to others. So build that wellspring within yourself. So let's Love go that. to number three. Hey, Margie, before we go and, to number three, okay. can, let me just give a yep. quick implementation because we really want you to implement. So take this. Don't okay. just say, oh, yeah, we got to do personal development. I want you to take a look at your personal development plan now and see what you're no longer doing that once upon a time you used to do or see the things that you've always wanted to make a habit and you haven't been. Really decide something before you go to bed tonight. Decide something that you are going to make important and do it for the next 30 days without fail just because you've got to add this piece in. And what you choose is not as important as choosing something that is in the personal growth arena and put it into action. I guarantee you 30 days from now, your business will change because of this piece. So I want this to be implementational for you. Great. Jot it down. This could be one of the things that you get to jot down <laughs> and mm -hmm. do. So number number three here um, is to continually expand your vision. Your vision, what you see for yourself, what you see for others, the possibilities that you see within your product and service, within the business itself, is it's what keeps you inspired. And so consistently expanding that vision and growing that vision so pivotally important. It really is, in fact, your vision that will have you leaping out of bed in the morning, raring to go, ready to meet the day. I mean, think about the feelings, like I mentioned earlier on the call, that woke up in you when you heard about it for the first time and you thought, oh, my gosh, there's something here for me. This is for me. And so ask yourself consistently, how can I see this bigger? How can I see it bigger? Because one of the greatest things you can do for your team members is to hold that big, giant vision of what's possible for them as they step into it. And one of the things that makes you so attractive is your ability to see possibility, your ability to see it big. When you think about how people go through their humdrum day and you know, meet all their obligations and then go back and do it all over again tomorrow and then all over again tomorrow until they take a Saturday and Sunday off and then they go back. And people get in kind of like a hypnotic rhythm of, of um, in, in many cases, just average life. And when you cross their path with your ideas, they might not get everything that you say about your product or your company or the opportunity, but they'll get that you see something big. And that lights people up like that really is very very attractive 
And it will be your big vision that you'll be able to draw on anytime there's fears and the negative self-talk and the belief level starts to diminish. Whenever that happens, it will be your vision that you will reinforce and sustain you through any challenging time. So, you know, get clear about what your vision is. What do you see for yourself? What do you see for others? Why you? Why now? Why your why your specific company? What's so special about all of it right here, right now? What do people need? See big, in a really big way, the answers and the solutions that you have with absolute clarity. And then ask yourself, how can I see this even bigger? And write it down so you can visit it. Let it pour from you when you feel truly inspired. Love that. I don't have much to add other than you are the master of this Anybody that's been around Margie, she has such a big vision, not just for herself, but for people in general, for the planet, for the world, for her company, for just everything. And it's just a vision that is in, it, it's so engaging and it overwhelms our doubts. Like you can't, I say this all the time, you can't be around Margie and just like feel bad about yourself. She won't have it. I mean, she's just such a big advocate for everybody's potential and we can all do that and i know i've got a ways to go and that's one of the things i love about working with you but that's really what we're talking Aww. about and that's what pulls people in Thanks, love Tom. that oh, of course of course okay let's go into number four uh this is a really really intriguing concept or at least title and it's it's walk away systems and what we mean by walk away is to put systems in place to where you can do what margie was talking about a, a little while ago you can walk away but most people aren't intentionally putting in their walk away systems they are hoping that at some point in time they can walk away but they're not in, they're, they're not building with the vision that we just talked about they're not building with the end in mind and so as a result, most people are hoping at some point in time they can walk away. But most people that don't get there don't get there because that was never the intentional plan, right? So you've got to have systems that are going to allow you to leave, allow you to walk away. And this is all about duplication. For, so for the first thing here is that it must be simple. You know, I talked about at the beginning of the call that these concepts are simple and success is simple. Mediocrity is complicated. Success is simple. That doesn't mean success is easy. Most people create things being hard because of the emotional attachments, all these things that we've been alluding to from a mental perspective, people make things hard, but things are not difficult. And that's a distinction. So something that's simple might be hard because of the emotional mindset that you bring to it, but it's still simple. It doesn't matter what your you know, training is in your business. It doesn't matter what the systems are or the tools that you have in your business. Most people are not using them the way they've been trained. Or when they do use them, they don't use them long enough for them to work before they judge the process and they get ex you know, irritated because it's not working right. And they do all this other emotional gunk but they, they stop doing what's simple. Simplicity duplicates. The more complicated you get in your training, the more complicated you get in your selling, in your recruiting, in your leadership, the less duplicatable you will be. So you've got to monitor that for yourself and catch yourself. Whenever you get complicated, you are short-circuiting your duplication. And when you do that, you're never going to be able to walk away. The second thing here is to use the tools that your company gives you. You have them for a reason. No company is going to create tools, whether they're you know, recorded calls, three-way calls, CDs, uh, videos on a website, brochures to hand out to people. Nobody's, the company's not going to create tools unless they work on some level, right? And again, what I find when people are struggling is that they're not using the tools that they have in their toolbox. So this is a, an assessment for you to take a look at yourself along with are you doing the actions is, and are you doing your daily personal development plan? Am I actually using the tools? If you're not using the tools, then you're complicating things and that's going to crush your duplication. And then finally here, know your end outcome. And I alluded to this, but let me 
really clarify this. If you want people who are duplicating on their own, whether you get out of bed or not, then from the moment they get into your business, you've got to have that end in mind. If I want somebody who's independent, then this person has to do things on their own as quickly as possible. Now, that doesn't mean you don't help them, but it means you set them free as fast as you possibly can. You know, most people think that they can build somebody up to a certain point in the company and then let them free. But as you're building them up, if you're not intentionally creating independence, then what you're doing is you're creating dependence. And no matter how far you build them to in the company, if they can't do it on their own, then when it's time for you to set them free, they will just fall right out of the nest and, and, and you know, splat. Even if they should know how to fly, even if they've watched you fly for a long time, the way to help people fly is to intentionally give them opportunities to fly. And sometimes that means they're going to stumble. They might skin, you know, skin their knees a little bit. They might get some bumps and bruises. But in the long haul, if you're looking for leaders who are not going to be dependent on you, then you have to intentionally create that. And you're in, when you have that end result in mind, it won't feel like you are turning your back on them. It won't feel like you're not helping them. You'll know that you actually are helping them, even if they don't see the vision, because you know what you're looking to intentionally create later on. But if you think, you know, if somebody asks you to help them do something, human nature is going to say, I like to help people. And so you're naturally going to be drawn to helping them. But most of the time when you're helping them, you're actually doing them a disservice. You're actually crippling them by helping them too much. Now, this is going to be a, an art. It's not a science. It's not, you know, you help people for one party and then they, they necessarily do the second party on their own. Some people might be ready to go after half a party. Some people might need three parties. You know, I don't want you to get stuck on the rules. There's no black and white rules when we're dealing with human nature. But if you have that intention, and Margie talked about high intention, low attachment, and you know the end outcome, then you'll be able to assess in what is, is what I'm putting in motion here what I ultimately want it to look like. And if not, then change it. Awesome. You know, I, there have been times when my business has grown really fast, and there are times when my business has grown slowly and steadily, and there's times when it seems like it was plateauing and felt a little flat. But I can tell you every time that it grew like wildfire, it was because there was a clear system and everyone was following it and everyone was using the tools. Even, even times it's so tempting when you feel like, you can say it better than the video or you can say it as well as something or other. Just use the tool because that's what's going to duplicate. Resist the temptation to try to, you know, to reinvent the wheel. I just, I'm such a believer in that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, appreciate everything you had to say about that. All right, number five, advanced leadership and coaching skills. So this, as much as anything that we've shared yet, this is an area where we are really going to unveil some important truths at this live event that we're going to tell you about in a couple of minutes here. Sean is masterful at understanding coaching. And what I realized as my business has grown and grown and grown is that, that there are advanced leadership and coaching skills and, and you don't learn them overnight. And we're ultimately, we are coaches and it's leadership in our business is so interesting because we can be one day old in the business and enroll somebody and all of a sudden we're a leader. We're thrust into leadership. And so understanding how to lead, how to coach so that you can create duplication is pivotally important. And, you know, one thing to mention here is that the attributes of great leaders are more so attitudes than they are skills. You know, leaders are visionary, persistent, consistent, passionate, teachable, authentic. They're encouragers. They're decisive. They're resilient. They're positive. They're open and receptive. They lead by example. They're service-oriented. They're solution-oriented. They inspire urgency. They support. They learn. They're continuing learning. They're, they praise people often. They're honest. They're trustworthy. They're compassionate. I mean, these, if you listen to those, those are pretty much, they're pretty much attitudes that you can embody. And I want to say, even after leading all of these years, I have learned so much about coaching from Sean. And that's one of the things we're really 
going to hone in on at this live event. Really, the advanced leadership is the biggest growth catalyst. And when you can move from training to coaching, magic can happen in your business. Your success will otherwise be handicapped by other people's beliefs. And this is just a really important factor. You don't want your success held up because of someone else's limiting beliefs. If you can, in fact, learn coaching skills and help them move through those beliefs by their own choice. I mean, this is all stuff you can learn, all of this. And you can reach any height, and you can help people in your business reach heights. So tell us what's possible, Sean. Yeah, it, it, that's such a such a key point, just this advanced leadership stuff. And when you really start to implement this, everything will shift. Um, on this next slide, we've got a story of a lady who used to really get stuck in all the emotional stuff that we've been alluding to and focused on what, you know, people are doing and not doing and so forth. And as soon as she made this shift and focused on what she could control and stepped into more of this coaching role without the emotional attachment and the high intention, low attachment, you know, she's another one who just had a, a huge explosion. Her team went from 17 to 73 and, you know, tripled her production every month. And one of the things that she said was the, the difference to change everything is, you know, I love what she says at the end here. The same mind that created the problem cannot solve the problem. And that is a, a, just a human nature issue. So if you just keep spinning your wheels in the mud, you'll probably just get deeper and deeper and deeper. And you've got to have a different perspective and you've got to have a different environment, right? We're going to get into this live event that we've got coming up, but we want you to have just the, the right journey based mindset in general. And we are never going to be the ones to say that this journey is going to be easy. But what we will promise you, and you saw this and you heard this in Margie's emotion earlier, when you commit to the journey and when you really go all in and you find the joy in every single step and you find the love, then it will be worth it. And if you can focus and you can connect to the value of this work and not how quick can you get there. You know, I want you to not focus on how fast can I reach this goal, but how far can I go or how many people can I help? That's the fulfillment that bubbled up in all the emotion that Margie shared a little, a little while ago that most people will never allow themselves to ever get to because they're focused on the stuff that really just don't matter. You know, and on the next slide here, this is one of the most critical pieces of fulfillment that, that we have to make the shift on. And at the end of our lives, you know, when it's all said and done, we are not going to care about how much money we made or the cars that we drove or any of the tangible stuff. The only question that we're going to judge ourselves with is, can we look in the mirror and say, I went for it? You know, did I go for it? If I went for it, if you can honestly say I gave it my best, then you're going to feel fulfilled. You're going to feel like you lived a good life. And, and the reason I'm saying that is I want to take that knowledge and apply it into today's activity. If that's what's going to ultimately matter to you in a grand scheme at the end of your life, then let's make sure that's what we're focused on on a daily basis. Did we try? It's not whether people signed up or whether they showed up or whether they gave us the right phone number. Did we try? That's what's most important to us at a deep level. So that's what's got to drive us on a day to day level so that we can have a solid positive conversation and it builds our self-esteem and it builds our confidence on a daily basis. And that's what true success and true significance is really built on. There's no question. It is fully liberating to know that you did your best, that you showed up. You showed up big. You're on, you're on the call tonight. You're here. You keep putting yourself in situations where you can be expired and you can inspire and you can expand and you can grow yourself and you can grow your team. I mean, you're doing all of the right stuff. You show up, and then there's nothing to beat yourself up about at any point. And you keep showing up. 
in this way, this strong, and taking action, that you will, in fact, have those things that will really become secondary. They'll be secondary compared to truly who you will become, who you'll become in the process. Mm. And the way that you will know that you can trust you, it will be incidental compared to the wealth that you will amass. But those things are nice, too. <laughs> but it's who you become the process. <laughs> that's, so a, that's a great point. You got, <laughs> you got a couple of you got a couple of choices. You know, you can commit to your comfort and convenience and you can stay stay where you are and not reach out of your comfort zone because let me promise you that if you reach outside of your comfort zone it's gonna be uncomfortable. In fact, if you are too comfortable, you're not growing enough. The other choice you've got is that you can change the game. You can rise up. You can step forward, you can stand out, and you can commit to a lifelong journey of challenge and change and growth and just call it in and show up strong. I mean, all the joy is there, really. Like stagnation, no fun, no fun, no joy in stagnation. But to completely put yourself out there and give it your all, like there's joy there regardless of the outcome. Hmm. Yeah, that's the key is – can you find joy in just moving forward? And that's one of the key distinctions between successful people and unsuccessful people. So we've been talking a little bit about this live event that we've got coming up. And Margie and I have done an event before together, but not, not specifically with this purpose. So we're going to allude to you know some of the other events that we've done. But this is the first time that we've come together with this intention and this event is called Elite Leadership Live. And if you want to register for it, if you know your heart is, is all in, then you can go to EliteLeadershipLive.com as we talk a little bit more about it. Elite Leadership Live is let, – let, let's tell you just some of the things that you're going um, to experience there. Elite Leadership Live is really about expanding your belief, your vision, your courage, your confidence. It's about creating just – unimaginable success in, and not only in your business but in your life as well because as we've been talking about you have to do both at the same time otherwise it's just not going to work it's about giving you the systems and the tools and the mindset to create the time freedom the financial freedom so that you can be who you are so you can do the best you can do so you can live a good life and you can also have some of the stuff that comes along with that, like Margie said. Yeah, those things are, are nice too. And it's, it's really about leadership. It's about being more powerful as a leader, being more purposeful as a leader, being more persuasive as a leader. It's also about creating this foundation of not just short-term success, although when you implement some of these things, you will have some short-term success, but who cares about short-term success if it doesn't stick, if it doesn't stay? So we're all about constant success, consistent growth, constantly evolving, both you personally and your business. And one of the, the distinctions that I'm positive you're going to get, and one of the things that really drive Margie and I, is the advanced coaching skills. Not just coaching skills that you can use with other people, but self-coaching skills, right? Like Judy said on that one slide, you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created the problem if you keep looking through your perspective. However, there are some self-monitoring skills and tools that we want to teach you because we don't want you to be dependent on us on a live event or necessarily a coach. Those things are great for you to do, but we also don't want to create dependence at the same time. And what drives us is to give you these tools that you can use to grow yourself and grow other people. And we alluded to it a little bit. We're going to spend so many hours at our live event talking about these advanced skills. Because if you can't help people through their stuff, then your business will forever be handicapped by the fears and the limiting beliefs and the conflicts of everybody else in your business. But when you can help them get around those conflicts, when you can help them dissolve some of their fears – now you can expand your business in a way that most people just never will because they don't have some of those you know, relatively basic coaching skills. I say they're basic coaching skills, but they're not intuitive. And the truth is what most people that I've noticed 
do to coach their people are actually the exact opposite of what you should be doing. So when you get in there and you don't have some of these skills and some of these awarenesses, then you could actually be doing more damage than good. So obviously we don't want you know for you to get into that situation. And when you put all these things in place, you're going to be a magnetic leader. You're going to start attracting people to you instead of chasing them down and tackling them and, you know, roping their, their arms and legs and trying to get them to sign on the dotted line and try to, you know, desperately get them in the business and put, put the mirror next to their mouth and see if they can fog it up. You're like, yeah, you're perfect. You know, it's about attracting the people who are foaming at the mouth and who just want more in life and all along the way this last one here is i think most important to margie and i all along the way it's about balance and it's about joy and it's about ultimately you know happiness on this journey in your life in this business that can all be done if it's done intentionally you want to talk about some of the details margie yes 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 so this event is going to be April 25th through the 27th. It's a two and a half day um, live empowerment event with Sean and I. And I want to tell you the best part about this is that it really is experiential. Mm -hmm. I've been to seminars where it's head learning. You you know take a lot of notes, but I know that this event happens like it changes things at the cellular level it's truly transformational because it's experiential and um it it is profound what occurs in that room the magic that will happen inside of you it will change you forever that's our guarantee in fact um we guarantee that or your money back and um the event is going to be held in la it's at the hilton the lax hilton and right now we've got some discounted room at $99 a night, which is fantastic. So really in a, in a, in very affordable flights getting in and out of L.A. And this is near the airport. And so you share a room with a couple of people. Um, and uh, it, it's highly affordable. The, uh, I guess we're going to tell, we'll tell the, the rest of the details in a second. I'll stop right there because we need it. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's going to be transformational. I love Margie talking about the experiential side of it for sure. And uh, we've got some bonuses for you as well. When you choose to join us at this live event, you're going to get our Eagles Club monthly empowerment program, which is a, a coaching program, group coaching program that includes some CDs every month and live calls with Margie and I. You'll get that for six months. You'll also get a private coaching session with one of our MVP certified coaches so that you can implement the learning. That's what it's all about. It's not about going to an event and then coming back home and then getting into your same patterns, although that's the experience of most people. So we want to give you some help after you come back so that you can implement uniquely what are the challenges that you're coming up against or you know, where are the focus points that, that we've really got to help with you. And then um, the final bonus here is I just put together – a uh, an audio coaching program it's a, it's a package of cds called defeating your fears and it's got eight cds in it and it's all about fear obviously from as many different angles as as, as we can get to so it's a it's a great audio program for you to constantly program yourself with this really a never-ending challenge. I don't want to call it a conflict or a war. I don't want to put negativity on it, but we're always going to be challenged by our doubts and our fears. And if you don't stay in that conversation, then your doubts and your fears are at some point in time going to overtake you. And that's where it becomes so much easier to you know, quit and do some of the mistakes that we've been talking about. Now, we've also got some fast action taker bonuses. We call them fat bonuses on the, on the next page here. We um, like to encourage fast action. Absolutely. Action is rewarded. So for you, when you register, if this is speaking to you, jump in. When you register by the end of this month, March 31st, you'll get an early bird discounted price. Now, the tickets of this event are $597. But as an early bird fast action taker, we'll give you the, the early bird price of just $197. If you want a payment plan, we've even got a payment plan option of just $77 times three. Now, Margie talked about this being a, a full money back guarantee event. We obviously don't want money to be what stops 
any of you, but we also, it's critical that you don't get stuck in the, you know, what if it doesn't work and what if I lose money? And, and like, that's the stuff that really holds people back. Most people have these financial issues and they're focused and driven by and really restricted by their current reality instead of their desire, instead of their vision. So we don't want money to be the thing that, that holds you back. And this event will fundamentally change everything so that if that is your reality right now, that you've been challenged with money, you've been challenged with anything that in this business, there's really only one way that's going to shift. And that's if you make a fundamental change at your core. And that is our complete intention with this event. Also, if you register by the end of this month, you're going to get a VIP ticket for a little meet and greet reception with Margie and I. We'll do some some snacks and some pictures and just have a lot of laughs and, and really network with all of you and, and just have a blast. And that'll be private time. private time. Yeah, some private time. And that'll be on Sunday night. Now, we also have one more fast action take. This is only for the first five people. So for the first five people that register, I personally, not one of my coaches, I personally We'll do a private coaching session with you. It's going to be an hour-long coaching session, which would normally cost 500 wow. bucks. At the end of the event, not not at the exact end on that Sunday, but after the event is over, it's for you to use when it would be best for you. So it could be a few weeks after the event. It could be a few months after the event. But I'm really committed to, and Margie's super committed as well, to getting in there and just helping you hit the ground when you come back home. So that's going to be available, but only for the first five registrations. Obviously, I'm not going to have the time to do that. With wow. Anybody. Wow. <laughs> that's so generous. That is very generous, Sean. Absolutely. And l let me just kind of um, expand this point that I was alluding to. On this next slide, it, what's important is that you have the right kind of conversation going on in your head because see what most people are focused on and one of the reasons that most people stay stuck is because they're constantly scared of the consequences of taking action they're thinking what kind of money can i lose what if it doesn't work you know what are people going to say if i take action and that mindset will do nothing but keep you chained right in the middle of your comfort zone the successful people that i know i'm positive margie would say the same way i know this is what drives margie and i and pretty much everybody that is super successful is they are not concerned about what the cost of taking action is. They are more concerned about the cost of not taking action. So the bigger pain is not failing. The bigger pain is not trying. The bigger pain for successful people is what if I don't try? What if I never find out? What if I go to my grave with music still inside that hasn't been played? What if I never sing my song? That drives successful people way more than what if I ask them for something and they say no? Or what if my friends and family judge me? And that's going to be probably the core question that will determine your results in life. What are you more driven by? The fear of taking action or the fear of not taking action? Do you have anything to add to that, Margie, before we wrap up here? Well, I was I was talking right away, and, and <laughs> you're on mute. On mute. <laughs> you know, I, I love that because I think a lot of people say, oh, you know, the cost. Oh, it, it, yeah, it's going to cost me some time. It's going to cost me some money. But I really think that is an appropriate question. What will the cost be of not? What will be? What will the cost be of delaying the call you feel inside that this is your time? What, what will the cost be of that? Will it just simply roll by you and, and, and you'll miss the window altogether? Will you just delay? At, you know, I mean, the, the cost is so great because it's not just you that um, – it's not just you that stands to benefit. Like this, this, there are people that are waiting for you. And so um, the cost, the way the cost is, uh, is, is very important. I, I just know – what this event is going to be like and I want as many people as possible to experience what I know will be the outcome of this event if mm -hmm. you're if you make the commitment and you show up and you play full out with us for a couple of days it will be transformational I know it beyond question mm -hmm. yeah that's really what it's about so we hope that this 
content, this webinar has given you a chance to really take a look at what you've been doing in your business and give you some self-assessment tools such as the action, the habits, the personal development plan, um, some of the mindset tools like the emotional attachment and so forth. And when you assess those things, you're going to get the answers that you're looking for. When you stay stuck in the problem, when you stay stuck in trying to solve you know, everybody else's issues or trying to figure out why people are not doing what they're doing and so forth, then you are, I mean, you're just not going to get anywhere. You're not going to give you anything. You're not going to give yourself anything to actually take action on though, right? So we told you that you could get a recording of the webinar. We'll wrap up here in a second. I'll give Margie some time to share anything at the end. But um, on this next slide here, you've got your this email address that you can send an email to. If you want a recording of this webinar, just send an email to info at Coach Sean Smith. And please put the subject line, Five Secrets Webinar Recording, please. My office knows what to do with that email. If you hide your request for this recording inside of another email, it probably won't be um, responded to, or at least it won't be responded to with any amount of quickness. So please follow those simple instructions. It it's info, info at coachshawnsmith.com. Sean is S-E-A-N. Info at coachshawnsmith.com with the subject line, Five Secrets Webinar Recording, please. One of the most difficult things for Margie and I to do is ever stop any presentation inside of like five hours because we're so passionate and every time we think of something we've got you know these examples that other people have given us or a coaching call that we were just on or a personal experience just happened this morning and we're constantly evolving and you know but we really acknowledge and appreciate all of you i mean there's hundreds of people still on the line right now and we appreciate your intention and our highest intention or our, our, our highest wish i guess is that you jump in you know, that you go all out for your life, for your business. If anything that we've been talking about resonates with you, then join us at this live event. It will absolutely fundamentally change everything for you. I promise if it doesn't, if you feel like it was a waste of your time, then there's no harm, no foul. You get all your money back, but we've never had that happen. There's absolutely no way anybody <laughs> is going to go through this content and be in a room of supporting, caring, high level thinking people and not leave with a different neurology, like not leave with literally a different body, feeling differently in your cells, in your heart, in your mind. And unless you do that, it's going to be very difficult to make a fundamental and foundational shift that's going to give you the success that you want in your business. So I think you can tell how passionate we are about this. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Margie, and see if there's any last things you want to say about the event you know, or anything yeah, before we close out. I just want to share one last thought and I know we did say we'd do some questions and answers I might have to jump in my car and do the question and answer um, from the car so I might need to pop off for a minute um, I think the last thing I want to share is that right now it's hard for each of us to truly weigh what the ripple effect is of the right actions and I think years ago of how I had my first like huge explosive growth in Eurasia and it grew beyond belief and I, I it's just like oh my heavens I'm finally learning there's a sowing season and a reaping season they're not in the same season and so for yeah two 23 years I've been making really substantial income out of that region of the world and this last year I was in Bulgaria and speaking to this just giant crowd looking out over these thousands and seeing the, the sea of faces and I just decided to pause there for a second and a, a great mentor once told me you know every now and then just stop when you're on stage and just breathe it in for a second like just don't rush past everything and jump right into your presentation like breathe it in and so as I was geez I'm an emotional wreck tonight as I was doing that kind of taking in these faces the thought crossed my mind what if I'd quit? What if I'd quit? Hmm. Like, look at the ripple effect, people whose names I will never know. And then the real coup. I mean, the, this is probably my favorite story now of 26 years. Later the next night when they were having their gala event, 
late, late, late into the night, they, they invited the children of the distributors to come to the stage. And hordes of kids from two and three and five and 16, 17, 19, 20, up into their, you know, mid-20s, filled this stage, 250-plus kids. I didn't know one of their names. And I seriously just wept because I thought, you know, I began this business because I wanted to give four kids a better life. And now look. Now look at the ripple effect. I could not stop what I've started. And there were so many times I doubted myself, but I kept going. Like, it's just so precious to think of the generational impact you can have by stepping up. Like, do you think as I looked out at that crowd that I cared for one second about all of the people who said no, about the miles I drove when no one sh- showed up? Do you think I cared about that in one moment as I looked into their faces and thought, what, what will you spread? What will, what will be a result of the ripple effect of the fact that I kept going and I kept growing and I kept reaching for the best that was within me and, and didn't quit, that I kept going? Like, I just think it's the sweetest thing ever, the ripple effect that can happen when you really step in and say yes Mm. and stand up, step forward. That's so good. I mean, we're always going to be driven by contribution and by helping people beyond ourselves. And that's, I think, my favorite story from you, too. And I can always hear the emotion and I can put myself in that, you know, on stage as best I can and, and imagine just seeing that ripple effect. And that will take you through those challenging times, but your own personal goals will not. There's actually a lot of science studies now that that show when we are focused on our own tangible personal goals, the neurotransmitters, and I don't understand the whole scientific you know terms well enough to try to explain that, nor nor do I want to, but the the, the, the neurotransmitters and the things inside our brain and the chemicals aren't released that give us that internal drive. But when we're more focused on contribution and helping other people and serving other people, literally our brain chemicals that give us that drive and the motivation and the determination are released. So, I mean, there's actually some science to back this up now that they've studied. This is not just a conceptual understanding. And unfortunately, because of all kinds of reasons and the way society programs us and so forth, most people are just constantly focused on those individual goals and the how quickly can I get there and why isn't working for me and I followed the game plan and how come people haven't signed up and like that will just always, always stop you. But constantly just think back to Margie. So I love how you said I started out to help four children, you know, my four (laughs) children. Which is still bigger than you, right? And that, that's still right, contribution. Right. But to see the impact that you've made, it's just amazing. So Thank you for that. I, oh, you, oh. You, I, I, this is more emotion than I've seen come out of you. And I freaking I love it. So I freaking tender. love I'm it. So Don't you tender. dare apologize for it. Don't you dare apologize <laughs> okay. for it. I love it. I absolutely love it. And that's what people love about you. And that's what you all need to be as a leader. No matter where you are, you can lead from where you are right now. It doesn't matter if you have no team members. doesn't matter if you've not made a single dollar. Leadership is about mindset and leadership is about service. Leadership is not about past results. It's not about goals. It's not about accomplishments that you've already made. Leadership is about service. and It's about being transparent. So if anything that Margie's story or anything that, that we've shared on tonight's webinar is really going to stick with you. It's that just go out and lead. Who cares what's happened in the past from this point forward lead. Yeah. Ancient history. Now is your time. Today is the day. Make the decisions now. Start fresh. Mm. Love so that. Want, I, I, I need to get in, in the car. Perfect. Um, do you, you want to, do you want to start entertaining some questions and I'll call as soon as I get out of the, uh, out of the garage. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, we definitely um, said that we were going to entertain some Q&A, so we'll do that. Yeah. I've, I'm looking at the questions that have been submitted, and there are a few ones here that are um, really important, great discussion points. Let's see. Let me find some here. One person 
Uh, just a details question. When is the event going to start on the 25th and end on the 27th? Thank you for that. We didn't have that in the slides. We're going to start at 3 p.m. on Friday the 25th, and we're going to end at 3 p.m. on Sunday the 27th. So you should have plenty of time to you know, be able to catch a late afternoon flight um, if possible. And if you have to leave you know, a couple hours early, then you know, do what you've got to do. But that those are the, the starting and end times. We're going to go pretty late on Friday, pretty late on Saturday. There's also a VIP mastermind opportunity that's totally optional. When you register for the event, you'll get more details on that. We're not going to share any of the details on that, but we are going to do a very small, intimate VIP mastermind with Margie and myself and only 12 people before the event on um, Friday, Friday morning, and possibly after the event on Sunday uh, if, if, if we're going to expand it into two masterminds we haven't decided that yet uh let's see somebody asked if we're going to do this in australia uh that would be fantastic um probably not yet <laughs> maybe we're not going to say no to that but we we definitely don't have that in our plans um just yet somebody asked if is this is the same thing that you've already reserved through the 90-day blitz program yeah it's the same event so if you're in our 90-day blitz program, you've already reserved your seat for this, then uh, there's no reason to to grab another one. Uh, here's a really good question. Oh, somebody says they already signed up. I hope to have that hour-long coaching with you. Yes, Marby, I I, uh, I hope you're in the top five. Also, you'll you'll um, find out. We'll let you know. Uh, oh, Mark, this goes back to the Australia question. Maybe on the web, like maybe a live stream. Thank you for asking this. The nature of this event probably does not lend itself to a live stream audience. Live stream meaning we'll set up a camera and you can be able to watch from your home um, for a number of reasons. Number one, this is going to be super experiential. There's going to be long time periods where you know people are doing exercises, and there's going to be a time where we might even you know leave the room, do visioning exercises, and so forth. It's not just going to be a content seminar you know you know we're not just going to go through our slides and deliver a bunch of information but the other thing is things that happen in that room are sacred things that happen in that room are confidential and there's an energy that is created by the participants in those rooms that number one can't ever be experienced outside of those rooms and sometimes with just the knowledge or the energy of kind of speaking to or projecting to an audience on the web also, it can damage that sacredness inside the room. So um, I'll definitely talk to Margie about it, but I can tell you it's probably a 95% no for those reasons. We don't want to diminish the integrity of this event just to try to get access to more people. And you know, we don't want that to be insensitive to those of you in Australia and other countries, but th 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 this event is, is special and we've got to guard that that specialness. So hopefully you understand. There will be other things that we might do that are more, um, you know, conducive to live stream events, and you'll definitely know about that. All right, let's see. Are there other alternatives for those that, who the live event is not an option? I've invited many friends to the webinar. Um, well, there's always all kinds of other alternative, uh, other alternatives. None of them are going to be as good as this because this is the best you're ever going to get. Um, and I say that, you know, not out of ego, but knowing what, where Margie and I are coming from, knowing the events that we've individually put on in the past and the event that we've done together in the past, uh, it, it's, it's going to be transformational and nothing short of transformational. If it's not transformational, then you got into the wrong room. Like <laughs> you, you must've gone to the Hilton and went to the wrong seminar room if your life isn't completely transformed. So there are all kinds of other coaching programs and stuff like that, and you'll know about them, but this is it. And I don't want to be insensitive to this question, but we also hear this quite a bit. People say, I can't get to California. I can't go to a live event. And I want you to challenge this can't thinking. The, the reality is you can, and it's okay to choose not to. But I don't want you to get stuck in this victim idea, pretending that you cannot physically do something and, and and i'm not trying to like use any kind of sales tactics to try to get you into the room with guilt or shame what i'm attacking here is the victim language of i can't 
99.9% of the time, whatever words come after I can't is an absolute lie. But what happens is people just get stuck on this I can't pattern and it becomes a knee jerk reaction to focus on the reasons to not take action instead of searching for the opportunities. Now, if you literally can't, you know, well, first of all, I don't know how you might literally can't unless you've got some kind of heart condition, you're not able to travel or something like that. If it's a physical thing, fine. If you've got a wedding, you know, to go to, that's not an I can't situation. That's an I choose to do the wedding rather than your web, you know, rather than your live event situation. So you might think that I'm kind of splitting hairs here, but this is, I'm such a language cop. And what I'm attacking is this victim mentality that most people have, and it comes out in their language of why can't I do things? So if you're choosing not to, that's cool, um, but you can. All right, what's the email address for the webinar recording? I missed it. It's info, I-N-F-O, at coachshawnsmith.com. Info. We'll get that back up here on the slide here in a moment. Uh, let's see. I have restarted my business. How do I transfer from transition from working full-time in my career as a nurse to all-in in my business without becoming fearful about losing a consistent income? This is a great question, and it's it's a common one. You know, people we hate the fear of loss. And if you've got a situation as a nurse where you got benefits, you've got income coming in, I don't know what the answer to that is because some people have a super low tolerance for risk, and they need a certain amount of money coming in, and they're just not willing to go into debt, and they're not willing to take that financial risk. Other people have, you know, a super high tolerance for risk. I'm that kind of person. You know, there are times in my life in the past where I've been hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and I didn't care and I kept going. And I'm not saying that's the way you should operate because it got me into many troubles in the past, but it's just the way I am. You know, I don't have a fear of risking. So this is a personal decision. I would invite you to discuss this with a coach and I would be doing you a yeah. disservice to give you some one size fits all approach because it totally is is contingent on and dependent on your unique factors. I might give you some one size fits all approach and then find out later on you're a single mom with five kids and I'd want to take back every single word I said, right? So I don't want to do that. Um, but have that discussion with a coach, somebody that can understand your mindset, understand your situations a little bit better and help you create something that's best for you. And, and somebody that's been in the business for a while because things can happen. If you're with a company that's been around forever and ever and you know it has sustainability, that's different than creating a big passive income with a company that's been around a couple of years. So you want to know that what you've created is really sustainable. And so I would say when you've been able to create pretty close to your current income and it's happening passively and it, it's consistent for 8, 10, 12 months, then you could probably feel pretty comfortable. Um, and at that point, it's going to be so obvious to you that your time is needed on creating your fortune and supporting your people. You don't mm -hmm. have time for that crazy J-O-B anymore. Sorry for the background noise. No, you're good. I can't hear much of it at all. And that that's a really good point, that you've got to create some consistency. And this business is inherently unstable. And a huge mistake that some people make is jumping off a cliff that they're not prepared to jump off of financially before they've created success or before they've created consistent success. You know, I, I know people that... Well, the other have, thing is... It, it, oh, sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't tell if you were done talking. <laughs> yeah, the other... Just um, quickly, people... Some people will have a lot of success in one month, make $5,000, $10,000 in a month, quit their job, and then make like $400 the next month. And if you're doing a lot of things that we're telling you to do about duplication, you shouldn't do that. But consistency is really important for a lot of people. So I'm glad you brought that up. Well, and yes, also one last thing on this topic is you don't want to create a desperation for yourself. If you have, you want to maintain that high intention, low attachment piece, you cannot be desperate for, for money because you're, you're just, it puts too much pressure on you. It puts too much pressure on every conversation that you talk to. It's like, it just, it's undue. It's, it's unnecessary. This business is one that grows over time. And, you will probably work harder getting to $3,000 a month than you will getting to $10,000 a month. And so just make sure that you've allowed it to really gel and you know what you've got in a really sustainable way so that you don't 
you don't put undue demands on yourself, on the people you'll be talking to, and on your business. It's not fair. Mm, love that. Great. Okay. Um, somebody's asking for the website. The website is on the screen right now. If you can see the slides, it's EliteLeadershipLive.com, and that should take you where you need to go to uh, to register. Here's another question that came in. This is a really good question, and it's really alluding to something that we talked about inside one of our group programs, Margie, the other day. And it's about so. Well, let me just read the question instead of trying to paraphrase it. Um, the same mind that created a problem can't solve the problem. But what she said is that's kind of contradictory to what we learned the other day where whoever has the problem has the solution. And so what we are talking about is this is one of the higher level coaching awarenesses and skills is that understanding whoever has the problem has the solution. But the distinction here, Stephanie, is that just because they have the solution, they won't find it on their own. That's the difference. So even though the solution is inside of them, if they just keep looking for the solution through the same lenses, with the same awarenesses, through the same perspective as the problem that they're currently in, that solution is going to be in their blind spot. So the role of a good coach is to guide people to find the solutions within that they wouldn't be able to guide themselves to. Hopefully that makes um, the distinction clear. Yep, exactly. Nothing to add on that one. Fantastic. And and what a great what a great question, Stephanie. Yeah, it's a really good Your one. Sharp, sharp yeah. mind there. Really good one. Uh, okay, somebody says, can you repeat the the costs and bonuses? Uh, we got disconnected. Yeah. So the the normal costs of the event, and we'll go back here to the slide. The normal cost the uh, the the ticket is after March thirty first going to be five hundred ninety seven dollars. The early bird price is four hundred dollars off of that, just one hundred ninety seven bucks for uh you know what it just hit me margie that's the lowest i've ever charged for a three-day event probably the lowest you've ever charged I for a three-day event either i know, I know. <laughs> but um that's the early bird cost for the next month until march 31st is 197 dollars. the bonuses you get is six months in the eagles club you'll get a private session with an mvp coach this is not me necessarily um over the next, if you sign up in the next month, you'll also get my Defeating Your Fears newly collection uh, or new collection of my CDs all around fear. And then for the first five people, you'll get a coaching session with me. I don't know if those five spots That's have been unbelievable. Um, I know there's several people that have told me that that they've uh, registered and so they're hoping that that they're one of those five. I don't know. I'll check here in a second to let you know, but those are the bonuses and the cost. This is gonna be a this gonna be a damn good event, Margie Alaprandi. It's gonna be damn good, Sean Smith. <laughs> Somebody's asking for the dates. It's the last weekend in April, April twenty fifth, twenty sixth, twenty seventh. That's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We start at three p.m. on Saturday and we end at three p.m. on Sunday. It's right next to LAX, so you just fly into Los Angeles International Airport. Um, you'll be able to get to the hotel pretty easily with with a shuttle. Can the hotel rooms be shared? Yes, the hotel room cost yeah. is ninety nine dollars. We've got a discounted room block. You'll get all that information once you register. Um, it's a discounted room block. You call up a certain number, ask them for the Elite Leaders Network uh, discounted room rate, and it's ninety nine dollars per room. We know there's going to be a, a bunch of people that are going to share that.